Whew. Hello everyone and welcome back to another installment in the Shovelhead build series for the Curve Bike. It's the end of the work day, so we're starting the second shift, and I'm going to be working on the rear cylinder head, again, for the shovel head. If this is the first you've popped into the video series here, make sure to check out the other four. It'll explain some of the complexities with this particular engine. And uh, so the rear head that we're doing here isn't really that complicated compared to the front one. This head has been worked several times so the valve seats are larger than they need to be because they've been worked several times so i'm basically just squeezing valve seats in there you guys haven't seen me replace seats yet so i thought this would could be a good opportunity for you to see that now the if you remember from the last video we ran into the problem with the oil uh, drain hole in the cylinder uh, unfortunately uh, when the brazing started on that there were cracks discovered around that hole one going up the cylinder and one going to the side and needless to say it uh, <laughs> kind of broke my heart a little bit but there had been so much work put into that cylinder already the uh, fins cut from another cylinder welded onto that one uh, moved and then push rod uh, indentions machined on the other side there's been so much work done on that we only have about two months to Sturgis that I have to finish that bike so the idea of starting over with a new cylinder uh, is is it wouldn't happen and I'm doing everything I can to have this bike ready for Sturgis so that being said I had to reach out to a very good friend of mine Paul who is a 40 plus year career welder he obviously has quite a bit more experience than I do and he was generous enough to offer his time now when he started brazing and discovered the cracks as well he reached out to a friend of his that he did contract work for who was actually a chief engineer and welder for Andretti uh, that's a lot of experience I would say I'm very thankful that Paul had such a friend so Paul has turned that cylinder over to his friend who is confident that he'll be able to get into that liner and uh, or the cylinder wall there uh, grind into it a bit weld those cracks up and then you know braze that hole then be able to refinish it and the reality is those cracks could have come from several places because of all the welding done on that cylinder and the fact that it is cast iron uh, it's went through a lot of heat cycles and then the machine work on the base of the cylinder and drilling the hole with that cast iron it's quite possible too many heat cycles made it brittle made it crack so we are just going to hope that it holds up you know worst case scenario uh it doesn't hold up and she smokes a little bit or it breaks a ring well if it's just a chance that i have to take uh to at least be able to get the bike ready for sturgis be able to ride it in sturgis because i'm not just going to build a bike just to look at so we need to be able to ride it at sturgis and if she holds together great uh, if the cylinder decides not to hold together, well, I guess there'll be another video on uh, repairing the damage that happens and making another cylinder. So that's where we're at on the cylinder just to get you up to speed. So I've spent all week doing heads for customer projects. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine. I got 10 sets of heads pretty much done this week. Uh, six of those valve jobs, everything are done, chamber size, deck, the whole deal ready to go, just waiting on cylinders. Uh, and then uh, I've got one, two, three, four sets there uh, that valve jobs are done. I only need to do the chamber work and drop the valves in. So it's been a very productive week in the shop. So I feel pretty good about starting shift number two. And I don't know where you guys live. I know I saw pictures from Colorado that there's some snow on the ground, but uh, we are hot and humid here in Georgia. I think we're in the 90s at this point with a whole bunch of percentages of, of humidity. So it's a little warm. Now, I'm going to go through and tell you how I'm going to do this valve job and, and the steps because, to be quite honest, I don't want to talk while I'm doing the work. Uh, the next day, of course, I've already put the guides in it. I'm using uh, manganese bronze guides. And uh, so we've already, I've already got the guides in, so we're going to ream the guides and then cut the seats out, all that. Uh, in short, 
uh, there is not necessarily a right or wrong way really to remove a valve seat there's several different methods uh, the method that you see me using before I get flooded with comments uh, is the method that I'm choosing for this particular uh, seat replacement now one way you can do it I think I have a valve yes here's an intake valve so uh, that's a big one isn't it so the uh, one way that you can do it is to actually cut back on the valve just undercut it to where it'll slide into the seat completely. You would drop a sacrificial valve in, uh, put a few spots of weld around that seat, let it cool and shrink, and then you can pop it out with a hammer and pop the valve seat out. Uh, I'm choosing not to do it that way. Another way, I've seen people just put small cuts around the seat uh, on, on the ID and then TIG it, boom, 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 let it cool, shrink up, and then you can pop it out some say it'll fall out so what i'm doing is of course i have uh, several different size cutters for valve seats and i'm going to progressively cut into that seat leaving just a very small amount of it almost as a stop at the bottom i'll make two or three cuts and then i'll should be able to take the bottom ring and that ring that's left and just pull it right out that sets the base so then I'll put uh, some die, some die cam on there so I have a visual and I'll cut the new seat just barely touching off to square up that flat area inside the head. And I'll cut my final size. Uh, once I get all the cutting done, then I'll do this off camera. The head will come off this. Uh, it will get heated. I already have the seat sitting in dry ice. So it's gonna be shrank up quite a bit. It needs to be a good tight interference fit, especially on an exhaust seat. Uh, so that cool, uh, heating of the head, cooling of the seat, helps that tremendously, reduces that interference fit when you first go pop it in there. So I've got drivers to do that, of course, and we'll drive that seat in there. Uh, and then we're gonna let it cool down. And after it cools, we're gonna do the valve job. I'm doing a very, very basic valve job on this. Remember that this is not a performance build at all. This is a, you know, this this is a 50, 60 horsepower engine at best. So it's gonna be eight and a half, nine to one compression ratio. And so it's just a very basic three angle valve job. So I'm gonna cut my seat angle first and then I'll I'll cut my throat angle and then, uh, and then I'll unshroud it and just give it a nice little flow for a good three angle valve job, nothing too complicated. Excellent. Excellent. All right, guys. I believe that's going to wrap it up for uh, for this one. I'm tired. Uh, time to go home. Tomorrow's Sunday anyway, and uh, I'll be back in here tomorrow. So tomorrow we'll film. Actually, I'll clean these up tonight, let them dry, and then tomorrow we will film the uh, setting the springs and everything else. So guys, thanks a lot for watching and coming along with me on this journey with the shovel head. If you're interested in this, make sure to check out the entire playlist, those four other videos. And if you don't mind, subscribe, tell your friends. Take care of yourselves and each other. Have a great weekend. See ya.